Hey guys, Cruel Blind Wave, I'm Eric. Rick. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And we are here for a new movie reaction. This is a crew pick, and mm. we have picked The Matrix Reloaded, which is uh, the sequel to The Matrix. And you might say, you guys didn't do a reaction to The Matrix? No, we didn't. We had all watched The Matrix before we ever started Blind Wave. But did we do a commentary? We do have a commentary available yeah. on the web, uh, our YouTube page right now, so you can look that up. You can uh, listen and watch along uh, to the entire movie with us, um, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, we, I think, all really love the first Matrix. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So it's good. We Very are here good. for a reaction. And that's because who hasn't seen the Matrix? Mr. Rick. I've Arnold. seen The Matrix. The Matrix Reloaded. I have not seen... Why'd you hit me? You haven't you put seen... Put your hand out. <laughs> you haven't seen two or three. And we have uh, a new Matrix movie coming up on the horizon here, which is why we wanted to jump into this franchise and uh, have some fun today. Or not have some fun. Yeah, I'm pretty heavily biased against this one. I've been yep. avoiding it since 2003. Yep. How do you Came know? out the same year as Devil May Cry 2. Oh. And I remember people saying, like, both of those twos were terrible. Gotcha. And I played Devil May Cry 2, and it was terrible. Terrible. So I decided to avoid this one. So, so we'll see. So we'll people were talking that Devil May Cry 2 and Matrix 2 yeah. were awful. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. in, in together, or just those are separate conversations? Separate conversations. Okay. I see. Gotcha. I see. Um, so I've seen The Matrix 2, 3. I, I personally, not yet, I personally really enjoy them. Um, I think it, 1 is like a perfect movie, and 2 and 3 is, it rides off the, the tales of a perfect movie, but I still really enjoy them. Uh, especially stuff that we'll talk about in this movie after. But what about you guys in terms of two and three? Well, let's just say two for now. Um, well, I don't want to talk about them right now because I don't want to... Uh, I guess I just mean like... Uh, uh, he Ray, already has said you that. haven't seen it sure. for a very long time. Sure, it's been a while. Um, there's definitely uh, there's definitely things I enjoy and don't enjoy about different movies and stuff too. But I do think Matrix is done really well as yeah. far as like its own... Like that one is done where it's like, well, if, you, if you have another one, cool. If you don't have another one, Cool, you know, it kind of like it sets up another one at the end, right? It's kind it's of in the like, way of a new hope a little next bit, right? Neil flies off. Like with a new hope, you could kind of just stop with Star Wars Episode Four, yeah. and if you didn't have any more, you're like, ah, they defeated the Empire. So, yeah, so like know? Highlander. Yeah, it kind of ends. It's it got a little bit of like, well, you could have more there if you wanted, and then you get into like Empire Strikes Back and stuff, where it's like, well, you definitely need another one after this, you yeah, know? Sure. So there's there's some things like that where I feel like Matrix is very much like you could just have Matrix, but. And I'm reacting to Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex right now, sure, which is a huge influence on The Matrix. Mm, it definitely. Is. I do love what they did with like their their video games and stuff too, because they used to have they had uh, what was Enter the Matrix and stuff like that too, which kind of messes around with some of the story beats of this, and like yeah. you play other characters from the sh uh, movies. But then they also had their like uh, their online that the they MMO. did that was really cool too, and they had like developers playing as like. Neo and Trinity and stuff or whatever and like the online MMO stuff which was neat. I remember that being well received at the time. So. You couldn't have had that without all this so. Yeah. Uh, guys this is a movie reaction. You can go down to the description find the full length reaction where you can watch the entire movie. We're watching this off HBO Max. You can watch the entire movie along with us. Uh, we're going to have a really good time today. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if we remember just real quick at the end of the first Matrix Neo has become the one Yep. He flies off into the air, um, nice. and uh, Morpheus and humanity has found its savior. So, where do you go from there? Up and away. <laughs> he just jumps. Fuck yeah, he does. He doesn't care. Oh well, yeah, he just switch bodies or whatever, right? Hey, that went through. Oh, that's not good. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Is he seeing the future? What? It's not possible. That'd mean there are a quarter million sentinels up there. That's right. Jesus. That can't be. Why not? A sentinel for yes. every man. I love the glasses. Child in Zion. But we well know that the reason most of us are here is because of our affinity for disobedience. <laughs> and what happens when you get back to Zion and the commander throws you in the stockade? God damn it, Morpheus, you ain't never gonna change. Shit, I'll do it just to see what that boat does to you. You got 36 hours. <laughs> oh, guys look great. I'm looking for Neo. Never heard of him. I have something for him. A gift. The meeting is over. Retreat to your exits. Agents are coming. Agents? Go. Hi, you fellas. It's him, the anomaly. <laughs> Do we proceed? Yes. He is still only human. I love the way Keanu Reeves moves his head when he says, Hi, you fellas. Hi, fellas. Hmm. Upgrades. Three! 
<laughs> Interesting choice of music. That main agent is the guy from Barry. That is fucking sweet. He oh, keeps their, nice. Hurt. Cardi champion? Yeah. I like the moves, it just feels a little slow. The ripple's interesting. Yep. It's happening exactly as before. Well, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love him. Hugo Weaving. Yeah, Hugo right. Weaving, so fun. It's great to have you back. Thanks. It's good to be back. Can I carry that for you, Neo? No, I can carry my own bag. Trinity? I'm fine. You can carry these. <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect, Commander, there is only one way to save our city. How? Neo. God damn it, Morpheus. Not everyone believes what you believe. My beliefs do not require them to. <laughs> now I would like someone else to close this prayer. Someone who hasn't spoken here in a long time, but who I believe has something to say that we all need to hear. I give you more food. More food. <laughs> concert. Like, Woo! <laughs> Like, 50 guys were like, they couldn't wait for Morpheus. As soon as they heard him, they were like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> they started screaming before he said his name. <laughs> I remember that for 100 years, they have set their armies to destroy us. And after a century of war, I remember that which matters most. We are still here! This is Zion, and we are not afraid! You don't take it too much. Dude, fucking... The priest of St. Mary's fucking did this all the time, I'd go to church a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> you just jacked. <laughs> no. What? The slag tights. <laughs> well, some sandals there. He starts impaling me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Morpheus, what have you done? <laughs> They're afraid! <laughs> <laughs> There's some really good lines in this movie. I haven't seen an agent suit that one before. Does it work? Oh, that's not good. What does he come out as, though? In that guy's body? I like how his suit is a little more black now as opposed to dark green. Yeah. And the other agents can still have that like kind of dark green look. Why? <laughs> Why? Because he's never had blood before. Yeah. Calvin. <laughs> he's never felt. Thanks. We'll see you. Oh, I love it. The, the guy has to do a subtle Hugo Weaving impression. Yeah. <laughs> you see the Oracle, aren't you? We don't have time. So shiny. Huh. Apologize for what? For this. I love the footwork in this fight because they're on the tables. And all they have to do is just raise a platform when they're not doing the wide shot. Jump, table, table. Ah, that is great. <laughs> I love how the cape, I know. the coat goes the like coat. that. It's so good. Because we're in there the whole time. Any pockets in this room? That character was originally made for Jet Li. It was. <laughs> but he wanted as much money as Keanu Reeves was getting. It was not happening. So they, they said no. <laughs> it would have been funny. I would have wanted it to happen. 
because These are back doors, it's the one What's determining that he's the one, right? <laughs> this is cool. Programmer access. We can never see past the choices we don't understand. Are you saying I have to choose whether Trinity lives or dies? No. You've already made the choice. Now you have to understand. I wonder how the programs choose what they look like. Mm -hmm. Or if they can choose. Sure. I mean, Oracle didn't look like that before, right? This guy's so just gotta go. Galloway birds! Another guy couldn't stay and fight. Mr. Anderson. It's protect the Oracle. His job is to protect the Oracle. Not to get my packet. Fight stuff. Yeah. Afterward, I knew the rules. I understood what I was supposed to do, but I didn't. Deletion. I didn't. I couldn't. I was compelled to stay. Compelled to disobey. I've changed. I'm unplugged. A new man, <laughs> so to speak. Like you, apparently free. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so but, good. as you well know, we're here to take from you what you tried to take from us. This would be interesting to have a shoot. Oh, hell yeah. Let's yeah, you know? get a bunch of guys that are kind of balding, in good shape, with some glasses on. They can do that, that grimace. Yep. <laughs> What he can do. Like, you know, he's been playing this for a while, but I see a bunch of me. I'm in. There's so many! <laughs> Just playing in one of those endless modes. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. pretty much. He moved the birds and summoned the horde. <laughs> <laughs> I want to remember it. I want to sample it. That's all. Just a sample. Why don't you sample this instead? Trinity. Or <laughs> <laughs> just like just let it happen. In the men's room. Like a rebelling program that misses feeling loved. It's yeah, right. <laughs> My husband saved them because they're notoriously difficult to terminate. How many people keep silver bullets in their gun? <laughs> you too. Get Zuki Maker. Ghosts. Ghosts. Yep. The other guys were kind of werewolves. Yep. You know your predecessors have much more respect. Predecessors. Weapons on the walls. <laughs> key maker, slow down. <laughs> so many keys. You can't lock him out. We're in. <laughs> and then why has he been trapped, Rick? <clears throat> Dead bolt. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Go into his face. Bleeds. We can kill it. 
You see, he's just a man. He blocked a sword with his hand. <laughs> and then he bled a little. <laughs> and summoned swords to himself. Size. Size doesn't matter, Calvin. <laughs> Moon. That guy's sideways. Oh my god! Everyone's grabbing some kind of spear, polearm, or something. Getting him down the stairs. Thanks for dynamic choreography. Oh fuck! You borrow this spear, thank you. God damn it! Where'd he hit him? Would be the end of me. Drop your weapon. Ah, uh -huh, invisible. <coughs> I love that. Sheath the weapon. It's not fair. Fighting it's guys like fighting Miria. That can be intangible. Yeah. You're all the way up in the mountains. Pretty far away. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, he's what? like, I'm looking at mountains. The real you know, you know, you know, no. Trinity and I don't have a way to get him out. Where are they? Middle of the city, 500 miles due south. 500. Superman. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Sir, are you sure about this? The freeway, I mean. It's dangerous. In 14 years of operating, I have never seen... Blake, what did I tell you? Yes, sir. I do, sir. Winslow Overpass? I'll be <laughs> I <ready>. do, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I do, sir. <laughs> you always told me to stay off the freeway. Repeat, they're approaching the... We have them now. The exile is the primary target. It's kind of like the way the agents talk. Yeah. It's kind of like a program a little bit, you know? It's cool. No! We need him. They're having a fucking kung fu fight in a car. Oh, driving. A kung fu in a fight in a car. So <laughs> he used the seatbelt. He's whipped him with the seatbelt. <laughs> Man, have you ever been whipped by a seatbelt? Oh. He's got to survive till Goku can fly in. Invisible in time. Yeah, hoo 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 -wee. So fucking cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Ah, he, he landed on his keys. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm on the highway, I think of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Texas tie back in. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> Dodge we <what> don't see. <laughs> oh, he went right in immediately. If you're out there, I could use some help. What is that? <laughs> They're both just running at each other. Thank God they exploded this way. Uh. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're watching an anime with your headphones yeah. on, you're like, yes! Yes! Quietly at your desk, it was like a 20 minute scene. Uh, I love this. Right. Took him three months to do the highway scene. Yeah. I do not believe in chance. When I see three objectives, three captains, three ships, I do not see coincidence. I see providence. I see purpose. Three I signals. believe it is our fate to be here. In time! Now consider the alternative. Boom. Boom. That's it, let's go. I don't know why they always do that. It, like, it makes that noise. What was Soren's job? 
Uh, to take up the back uh, the backup power is going to be coming up as soon as they open that door it's all over or whatever the door is the hell it is you said stay out trinity <laughs> no matter what i will not stand here and do nothing i will not wait here to watch them die in five minutes i'll tear that whole goddamn building down <laughs> how much further here just here go ahead shoot the best thing about being me there's so many me's. All the doors open. Ah, so good. <laughs> but there's waiting like he's gonna say it. Say the cool thing. No! <clears throat> you throw all the other side of the doors, yeah, just waiting and listening, right? Join us. Uh, three. Uh, <clears throat> seems to be an all or nothing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What's well, like when you try and download a file? Yeah. <laughs> like, Stuck I, in 99! 99! Can't most of it work? No! Oh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. survives. God damn it, Keymaster. He's really dead, isn't he? I don't believe it. He the coolest program. What was his purpose? Hello, Neil. Who are you? I am the architect. I created the Matrix. If I am the father of the Matrix, she would undoubtedly be its mother. The Oracle. Please. Please. He doesn't like calling her that. Hope. It is the quintessential human delusion, simultaneously the source of your greatest strength and your greatest weakness. If I were you, I would hope that we don't meet again. It's crazy how not scary they are when Neo fights them, and how scary they are when it's anyone else. It's how it's shot. <laughs> You're bad out of hell. Whatever it is, it's moving faster than anything I've ever seen. <laughs> Look how fast it's going. He's <laughs> picking up cars on his wake. Fuck all those people. He, that's the point. He only cares about her. Jesus. That's Tom Cruise level speed. Don't take this one. <laughs> Man, that one agent's like, oh, I got her now. Oh, no, no. The cars hit him. Cars are just smashing into him. She didn't hit the car. Still shot, though. Is that okay? I don't know. <laughs> There's already a needle in there. Uh, That's super cool. Yeah. I'm not letting go. I can't. I love you too, damn much. Squeezing her heart to beat it. <laughs> Again! <laughs> <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh, he just stands up. Can't take this. What are we gonna do? I don't know. Oh no. Damn, listening devices. So much for 24 hours. Looks kind of like one of those things that was this idea. One of those worm things. The Nebuchadnezzar. Come on. Something's different. I can feel them. Can you control them? An EMP was triggered before we can get in position. Five ships were instantly down. When the machines broke through, it wasn't a battle. It was a slaughter. Was it an accident, some sort of malfunction? No one knows. Someone does. Smith. <clears throat> Come on with his knife. <laughs> Not 
not continue to the conclusion. All right. What was better, this or Devil May Cry 2? <laughs> <laughs> this was better. <laughs> yeah. Um, As we know, middle chapters in all trilogies are always the best. Two Towers. Two Towers is generally one. <laughs> yeah. Empire Strikes Back is yeah. pretty good. This True. is no yeah. Empire Strikes Back. No. Uh, I thought the first like 50 minutes or so were super boring. Yeah. But once we got to that multi-agent Smith fight, things oh, picked up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I definitely agree. Uh, so much of it is outside of the Matrix, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to Zion, you're seeing like where the humans and stuff live and whatnot. You it's could definitely cut down the, the dance scene section maybe a little bit to where yeah. it's like, yeah. okay, I get what's going on. We can move on. Kind of yeah, I actually that. really like what's going on. I love the idea of like this is how humans can express themselves in a way that machines can't. So let's show them that. But it didn't need to be seven and a half minutes long. No. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's pretty long there. So that can definitely be cut down a little bit there, I think, yeah. too. But sure. Um, and like everyone just seems to say the same thing over and mm-hmm. over again. They're just talking about choice. Yeah. And like this person says it, and then this person says it, and then mm-hmm. this person reinforces it, and it's just a lot, a lot of that. Sure. There's definitely a lot of, especially when you're in Zion, though, I feel like there's a lot of, like, they're saying the same things, but you're also getting, like, well, this one believes in this. Obviously, Morpheus believes one way. Commander Locke Mm -hmm. believes another way. You have all these other people that are in different points and stuff. And, like, even the the Council Haman? Yeah, Council Uh, Haman. Council Haman. Something like that. Like, he even kind of goes down to being, like, you know, there's, there's choice, sure, but his thing really focuses on the idea of, like, everything has a purpose. Even if I don't understand what that purpose is, I can understand, like, that's important. I don't know how it works or why, yeah. but there's a purpose for it, so it should be. It even, it's important. And, it, and it directly connects what the architect is saying. Like, these machines are keeping us alive. We don't know why. And the architect is saying, yeah, we keep them alive because it, it solves this math problem I have. Which is really cool. I didn't really notice that until this watch. That that's what Haman is talking about. He doesn't understand it. Sure. There was a few things in this watch through that I didn't get initially when I had watched it before. And I don't know how many times I've seen this movie. But like I always thought the ghost twins. I'm like, those are kind of <laughs> weird. I feel like they just yeah. kind of come out of nowhere. But like this time here, I really focus more so on the uh, Oracle talking about like, you know, the aliens, ghosts, vampires, Werewolves. all that kind of stuff. Like programs those are, that are hiding in the Matrix. Yeah, they're programs that have messed up and now they're hiding somewhere and whatnot. Or so yeah, like maybe there was a reason those twins were these ghosty entities. But yeah. now they don't need to be anymore so they should be deleted but this French dude who's not really French but likes French wants to hold on to him and he has all these things yeah. that should be deleted by now you know but then like like what does that mean mm-hmm. like did ghosts exist in a world before the Matrix and they're replicating them or are all of the ghost myths and things that we're familiar with only because of these programs I, I think it would be similar to the idea of like maybe those could have been agents from a time you know like what are agents like, they're there coming in to stop these things that shouldn't be. But were they always agents or were they something else before, man? Yeah. No, I, don't, I don't know. Like, there like probably the, was a reason for them. Yeah, like, the why twins, were the werewolf guys? The twins did something, and we don't know what exactly that thing is, but they have rebelled, and now they have these powers. So, sure. like, maybe they do wind or like, they do jellyfish or something. We I don't, don't know. know of any other programs that can just, like, oh, take over this person's body now, and yeah. I'm, I'm now an agent here. Like... At a point, would that become obsolete where you don't need them anymore? But could those agents be hiding out somewhere, and that's an ability they have? You know, I don't, I don't know. But I imagine the ghosts and the silver bullet werewolfy yeah. dudes who were watching a werewolf movie. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, the I get this a little bit more now. Stuff. I didn't get this before <laughs> yes. when I watched it. You know, but I imagine they all had some kind of jobs before, and they just don't need those jobs anymore. Those two guys were mini bosses in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Do you have to shoot them with silver bullets? I don't. I don't think so. A lot of the game is just running away from things you can't beat because you're Naomi and Ghost. You, yeah. You're not. You're not Neo. You know? You're not the one. <clears throat> uh, but the two main action scenes were spectacular. <sighs> like the multi-man fight lost a lot once he picked up the stick. It did because it's all CG. Because it's all point. CG at that point. But in yeah. 2003, that, I didn't fucking. I was just like, man, this looks great. But <laughs> sure. you can definitely see its age now. Yeah, but before that. That choreography is amazing. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't, like, how? How do you chore? Like, do you literally just have, like, give me a hundred stunt guys. We got to lock off the camera in certain spots so we don't see, like, 70 guys waiting. But <laughs> it really feels like there's no, like, like, they're just getting each other's way. But well, yeah, no, it's like, just a scale that choreographers never had to consider yeah. before. It's like they're making a Dynasty Warriors movie. Yeah. Sure, yeah. 
And when he gets that stick, that's what it feels like. Yeah. He's like, just, brr, brr, <laughs> just knock down all these guys, yeah. you know? And I definitely agree with the uh, the CG-ness of, of once he gets the stick. Um, I mean, there are still shots in there that aren't, especially because you can tell it's rubber, <laughs> rubber stick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... I feel like the animation is not the problem, and I think it's just the resolution of what it looks like, the texture, sure. the, yeah. the the sim. Uh, it's the, the that you can sim. tell it's yeah. not right. Yeah. It but looks like, too... like the actual choreography and animation. Like I love when he puts the stick down, he has it around his neck, he's holding it on the sides, and he's just running, and he does this like motion of like <laughs> looking <laughs> what he's doing. There's something that feels so human about that to me. Yeah. So I don't uh, at all like disparage like the actual animators putting together what looks like a cool fight because sometimes you do animation with choreography and it tends to be kind of keyframey but this felt fluid to me yeah it's just i feel like how they animated it 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 looks like a human yeah flying through the air on a wire it doesn't look like a wireframe animation that is keyframe animated because it it has weight sure how they make the move yeah, and it helps. have him kick and everything. Yeah, it helps too because he's moving in all these unbelievable ways anyway because of the wires. Yeah. Sure. sure. And because that's one thing too is like there's some moments in some of the choreography where I'm like, that seems weird. But when I'm thinking about well, they're inside the Matrix and there's weird stuff in the Matrix of what they can do anyway, it doesn't... It kind I'm of like, matches. well, I can kind yeah. of blend that in together where <laughs> it's like, well, he moves sure. weird here because... He can do this. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's Trinity like, can float in the air and spin around yeah. and kick, you know? It's like when someone, like a sword fighter, like looks at Star Wars and it's like, well, you know, they wouldn't really turn their back and, and strike here. It's like, well, they might if they could literally see the future and know that strike is coming, you know? So there's a little bit of like, you can blur the lines. <clears throat> but I, I like the just scale of ridiculousness in that scene. Like it starts and you're like, oh, okay. So, we're gonna have a fight between these two again. That's cool. And then, like, you know, purpose that reveals, you know, and he like comes out and there's there's twelve, fuck, and then there's twenty, and then there's fifty, more, and then there's a hundred, and then there's three hundred. <laughs> it just like keeps going, going, and going, and you're just like, what are we watching? What's happening? But I, it, it always it, it, it keeps me in it. I never get out of that scene. I'm never like this is ridiculous. I mean, I am, but it's like a it's like a. A fascination. Yeah, it's a fascination. I, ridiculous. I think there is a line of ridiculousness, but I think it is blurred by the idea of like you're in the matrix of this yeah. program thing. I mean, you're watching a guy who's like shoving his hand into people and making sure. a copy of himself or something, you know? Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, okay. And then it's just the design of Smith, like his costume, his the face, the sunglasses. Like if you really pay attention, like that guy is clearly not Hugo Weaving. Sure, there's a couple but, of shots. That I but you just out. like you just end up buying it regardless because it's like, well, the sheer ambition is too much sure. for me to hold a standard to that. Yeah, <laughs> I was so excited when Morpheus got that katana and that gun. I thought he was gonna pull some Dante shit. But he never did anything with he, with the gun, especially. Yeah. Like he never used the gun when he had the sword, other than to blow up the one truck. He blew up the one truck, which I do love that shot. Like, I don't imagine know. just like bang bang. Yep. That shit would have been great. Yeah. yeah, but when would he have done that? He's unfortunately fighting. <laughs> when? He's unfortunately fighting an agent, which it's not going to matter. Sure. I mean, he did that a little bit, didn't he, yeah. in the uh, parking garage, but he's fighting fucking ghosts. Yeah. You yeah. Know? They're just going ha, through. Ha, ha, and they're just like, it doesn't yeah, do anything. It doesn't do anything. You know? And then by the time he fights the agent, I think he only had the sword. I don't think he had a gun anymore. Yeah. Yeah, he only got the sword because it was still stuck in the side of the truck. Oh, so cool. He sticks it in the side of the truck and then goes down Stands and grabs the key maker. So good. But yeah, the uh, from the chateau to the highway scene when Neo picks him up, it's like eighteen minutes long. It's my favorite scene in, the, in, in any Matrix. Sure, no. Which I, I like mean, that. they're very clearly different scenes. Like the highway scene is, itself feels contained, but I mean, it doesn't stop from the Merovingian saying "kill him" to Neo taking them out. Like that, it's one complete sequence of of a chase. Yeah, and it's insane. No, it's a lot of fun. I like it a lot. Even more so, like, the idea of, like, they spent months working on the highway scene. I'm like, well, I understand that because, like, there's a lot driving and doing and yeah. chasing and cars getting hit and not getting hit. Sure. CGI. You gotta make, well, you yeah, know, it like, always kept my eyes in the right place because I yeah. hardly ever notice any CG cars. Oh, yeah. yeah. Only whenever it's, like, like, I don't know why the camera's going through the axle of this truck, but I guess just to say you did it. But anytime, uh, especially the the motorcycle stuff, when the uh, like camel would get too close to a car, it's usually a CG car. Yeah, sure. it would turn too green and blurry. Or if it was skidding, it was yeah. usually CG stuff too. But they did like Aaron looked it up. Like 
GM donated like 300 cars and they crashed Jeez. every one of them. Uh, it was one of the things I said you That's were That's amazing. Yep. 300 cars and they wrecked them all. Every single one. And I'm like, no wonder they had to use CG cars because they yeah. were. They ran out. <laughs> they ran out. <laughs> right. But if you have them, you might as well wreck them. Yeah. Sure. I suppose like so. Like you get all the shots you think you need. It's like, ah, all right, let's wreck yeah. it. You get GM making those. You get Samsung making your cell phones. Yeah. You know, like. But yeah, they, they built those that cell phones came out, right? Those cell phones? Uh, yeah, they were available they yeah. to purchase. Yeah. yeah. They sold a lot of those because of this movie. I mean, they had mark they had commercials that were just the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the highway scene too, like they built like a mile or two stretch of that walled highway and just looped it. You know. Sure. But it's kind of brilliant because they have elements of a skyline that you can barely see, so you have depth in your shots. Like, oh no, we're still in the city, but they don't have to rotoscope or green screen around. All of these fights and people and stuff is going to look really janky. Yeah. You know, at one point they do get away from the walls and, you know, Morpheus walking towards, you know, there's a little jank in there with the green screen, but they were able to get rid of most of that by just having the walls on the side. And, it, and I, I said it in the reaction, but I never drive by like a, a semi trailer on the freeway without thinking about that, that sure. fight. I love that fight so much. Yeah. I love the agent like jumping on the car. <laughs> Crushing down, he's like launching, off. launching himself off of it. Yeah, was Phantom Menace ninety nine? Ninety nine. Yes. So Attack of the Clones. I'm trying to think of like what other movies came out. In Attack of the Clones was two thousand and two. Yeah, I believe. That sounds right. And that was still that they, they shot that on digital, whereas this is still shot on film. So. But and yeah. Attack of the Clones, like every. Like clone troopers, CGI. In that, yeah, you know? like, true. So you're just trying to think of like CG stuff. But because yeah. everything yeah. is CGI in a lot of those shots, it, blends better, it kind right? of blends. Whereas like, you know, that there, I, I love the shot of the of the agent, you know, jumping over. But you, I feel like you can't see the kind of sheen of like it's a CG character. Doing sure, that, you know. And there's a difference of like here's a trooper in armor. Yeah. Or an alien you've never seen before, CG'd, versus sure. Hugo well, Weaving. Here's Hugo a dude Weaving. In a suit. <laughs> or flying Keanu Reeves, where it's like, it looks pretty good for 2003, you know? Yeah, Comparing more. it to like today, where it's like, fucking, that yeah. guy's dead, but yeah. I, it almost looks like that guy's there, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, like the Mummy 2 was two years before this with the mm-hmm. Scorpion King. Uh, it's way better than that. Yeah, so sure. much better. Sure. <laughs> They also, like, they do a good job, too, because one of those things in, in that, I feel like, is the facial expressions, you know? It's harder to get the facial expressions to do just right. And when they're doing things, it's, well, the a, lot more, help. it's a lot more just flat-faced. Like, you're not mm-hmm. smiling or doing things, or having to do with people's eyebrow or nothing. And then, yeah, every time it's always with the sunglasses on, yeah. so you don't have to worry about the eyes. You can add in some reflections to distract from it. And, and Smith and Keanu aren't emoting all that much either. No, no. Really? No, Keanu Reeves doesn't emote that much as, as a whole sometimes, so. Except whenever he's <laughs> all of his emotions in the architect room. Yeah. yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> I love how he's doing the, the man in black yeah. like middle finger right, right at the camera. That I, was really I good. expected him to emote a little more over Trinity, mm-hmm. but sure. it all worked out. No, I get you there. So I, did you, do you feel like you got a grasp on what the architect was saying a big complaint of the movie was people like I don't know the fuck he said no I think I get it I think it's most relatively part. straightforward I definitely get it better now Dude. than when I was fucking younger yeah I get you 14 yeah, yeah no it makes know? a lot of sense of just like I <coughs> made this perfect thing it was too perfect they talked about that in the first movie mm-hmm. and then sure. like well because choice is implemented there's always this overrun yeah. that creates this thing that does have ultimate choice mm-hmm but he always chooses to restart the cycle again. Yeah. Yeah, they said they said like he's the uh, the sixth iteration, right? Yeah. Yeah, the sixth one. So all the other ones, I mean Morpheus says in the first movie, the one was the one who he freed the first of us mm-hmm. and he established Zion and that was how long ago, 100 years. Um, now that I'm not sure why you need to pick these people to go and make Zion again. That part I didn't really understand. Well, I think they, it's they kill everyone and they restart the city with 23 people so you have to like start spreading out a new the, like, the thing is the architect right? the architect has it down to the numbers he's like there's going to be a certain amount of people that just do not accept the matrix the one percent he has it down to the numbers of how many people that's going to be you know that's why the one is kind of more powerful more free and stuff like that he has all the source code that needs to go back to the source to reset the, reset the whole thing and he knows I, I have people picked out these many men, you know, you can select them, but it needs to be this many people, and that's going to be the remainder of his equation. Well, and he also, you can tell that he doesn't really like it because it was the Oracle's idea. 
He doesn't sure. like that his stuff isn't perfect. So when Neo makes a different choice than the others, he almost is like, <laughs> like I told her. I told her this wouldn't work. Which I always like that uh, acting choice. Though he has to be a machine and not a mode at all. He has a very subtle, like, <laughs> told you. Sure. To him. But yeah, Neo is like filling in the variable. Yeah. Of like, well, I don't know what this part of the equation should be. And Neo fills that part in. Sure. Right? Like, I always hate it, like, when you're doing math and you have the remainder left over. Like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I guess he has the right. But So they need Zahn because they need a place for these 1% to go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you need, have... You have... need, like, a destination for that unresolvable equation you, to store them, to keep the, them, The like, issue was contained. that they have those people who won't accept yeah. the Matrix, right? Sure. So they need a place to go. So the place Why not you just need kill to, them? Because then you start causing more problems amongst it. That's part of their... their equation right like if, it's it, if, a way if that was a solution they probably would do it but it won't work so you need to have them being able to go and do something and then once it starts getting to a point you have the one go through you have it reset and you do it all over again and it keeps your little battery of people operating and going it's a way of it's just like i said it's another way of controlling them. yeah yeah the illusion of choice depending on how it goes and memory it, overflow yeah depending mm-hmm. on how it goes and if they start killing them it might end up causing problems among the other 99%. Yeah. And maybe then you start getting like, well, now only 97%. Now only 90% believe or something like that. So you got to keep like a, however their equation works, you got to take care of that 1% and do it in a way where they are happy and it keeps everything working and flowing until we need to reset it. That's how I imagine it goes. It's the illusion of hope too. Yeah. I love that it's the Oracle that comes up with the idea. She's a program designed to try to figure out human psyche which is the one thing the machines just can't grasp Mm -hmm. so she's kind of on the edge of this like does she rebel does she not i mean she has like this other program that's protecting her she's using the corridors is she doing what she's supposed to do is what is her purpose the whole point of the movie is like what your purpose is sure it's very deterministic like you can make a choice but your choice was already made you just have to understand why you made it yeah yeah but neo says fuck that at the end and I like that, you know, the architect recognizes that. He's like, all the other ones were, we programmed them in a way that they would love all of humanity. But you seem to love one person. And that's what has changed. And Smith has also changed. I don't yeah. think Smith was always there either. No, yeah. But Neo affected Smith. Yeah. We are connected. There's a, uh, I don't know if you saw it, uh, Aaron, on the IMDb. IMDb page, but there's one uh, one here that I really like. I wanted to say when Smith first shows up, he's in a car, and uh, you can see his uh, license plate. Mm-hmm. The uh, license plate uh, is IS five four one six, which correlates to Isaiah fifty four sixteen in the Bible. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument of his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. <laughs> I just thought that was really cool. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. <clears throat> now, there's another one talking about the uh, the time frame and the, uh, uh, what was it, the 27 blocks that need to be blocked out mm-hmm. was referencing to parts of the Bible, too. Yeah. So, like, there's different biblical things amongst mm-hmm. this, too, which is interesting to have in there. And then uh, uh, in, in Hinduism, like, the idea of, like, the door of light and all these programs come from the source and they must return to the source is, is a very Hindu uh, Hindu kind thing, of belief. You know? So there's a lot of that kind of stuff wrapped in there as well. But I, I love that a central theme of this is Morpheus is for sure. He knows this is the case, and you can see the moment when that just... Shatters for him. Sure. Yeah. They're running off script now. Yeah. That was interesting. Rick was like, whenever they were at the chateau place, Rick's like predecessors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. The Merovingian, you know, he seems to be. They, he called himself a trafficker of information. Like, he wanted to play around, and I think that he, you know, he realized this happens too. But like I guess their roles are they got to get the you know they need the key maker to get Neo to the place right and I imagine the architect has like a plan for that but like does that mean that the Merovingian was always meant to happen? 
Sure. He just like begrudgingly does this. Yeah, I don't know if he always has the key master. Yeah. Maybe he has it this time. Does that gives them like, power? The Oracle says they can't do anything. They couldn't even get like a word from the Oracle until she found where the key maker was. So I imagine that's maybe a little different too. Sure. Than previous like, iterations. Is it a thing where you you program it so that there is a entity defending him mm -hmm. and you have to get past it? Because then it's a challenge and you've succeeded. You've yeah. overcome something. So it wasn't just given to you easily. So you sure. don't think about it being like, oh, these are all steps and tricks or something, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. Like if you overcome something, you're thinking that I did this, not... You know, it's like uh, A New Hope, right? The sure. ease of our escape. Easy! Well, you know? yeah, oh, like, it's like Gurren Lagann. Sure. Mm -hmm. I could see mm -hmm. that. So, it could be something related to that, or it could be like they're all like programs that are supposed to be deleted, so he's just doing whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. But he also talked about the predecessors, so it seems like he's met up with all the predecessors before. And it so. has to get worse each iteration that happens. More programs stop doing what they're supposed to do. Sure. Or don't get Or don't Or deleted. have been... Uh, uh, Exiled or whatever. Not exiled, but uh, like they're no, no. If they were deleted, they would be there. There's new ones that are better than those. Rip Become place. obsolete. Obsolete. Obsolete's a word that. And in a way, know, Smith you know. is like trying to stop what's supposed to happen. Like he says, like I'm here to take from you what you took from me. Purpose, you know. Yeah. He's trying to stop Neo from going back to the source code because he wants to burn it all down. He hates his place. Yeah. I just love Smith. It's the this. smell. Yeah. <laughs> The guy's like, oh, God. He's like, Smith will suffice. <laughs> I wonder what they said, like, there's a life that we are willing to live that does not involve humanity. Yeah. I wonder what that looks like. Like low power mode. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. hibernation. Or, uh, it was, uh, there's sacrifices we're willing to make mm -hmm. or something like that, right? Is kind of the wording they, they used, I think. Mm -hmm. They said, there's like, there's a level of survival we're willing to survival. Yeah, yeah, that's, survival. That's, what survival. that's what it was. Yeah. I knew it started with an S. I imagine it's just like, there's, you know, there really are know, machines. We don't know what their society is like, but yeah. maybe they just don't have as many sentinels or something. Sure. I don't know. And they like build machines to to fly through magnets yeah. to create electricity. Um, well, what did you think about like Smith and all the things going on with him? I mean, I can't imagine a Matrix without him. Sure. <laughs> did you like? The idea that one of him copy himself is different. Sure. But then he copies himself into the one guy who answers the phone. Yeah. And yeah, and then comes Zane. out. Yeah, I'm not really sure how that works. I mean, if it works the one way, it must be able to work the other way as well. Sure. So, like, he's just overwriting the data. Like, I don't... Clearly, they have some sort of connection to the Matrix, so they must have some sort of cybernetics in their brain or some sort of... Interface. Pass through interface. So I guess he's just taking control of that. Sure. And it doesn't we know seem... they have that port into their brain. We don't know how it works, but like. I mean, that's the only one we've seen where he took control of someone who was awake. They've mm -hmm. been awakened, right? Yeah. Everyone else who took over are in their battery pods. But he's also been awakened. Sure. But yeah, like, too. everyone he's taken over has been in their battery pods. Like, if you went and awoken one of them, would that just be a smith then? Mm -hmm. Which I imagine that's how it would be. This time he hit, he found one who was a, you know, if he would have gotten Morpheus, would Morpheus yeah. be able to go back and now he controls Morpheus's body, you know? So yeah. it seems like he's like taking over like their consciousness yeah. and or subconsciousness and then has removed their data of them and is now like and putting it's not, himself in place of it, which it's is not interesting. Even, it's not like, I, I remember, you know, reading some people being like, oh, I don't like how he has this random power up. Like it's a natural evolution of agent's power. Like agents can move from one to another He's just, rather than moving and then leaving that dead one, you know, he's just copying over. Yeah. It's, and, like, it's like a natural evolution of the agent's ability. Instead of sure. control X, control V, yeah. it's yeah. control C, He's control just doing v. something outside of what he's allowed to do. Yeah. Like, it makes you think, like, I wonder if all agents could do something like that if they wanted to. Like, what did Neo give him? What did Neo, he said, like, you know, maybe some part of you imprinted onto me that might just be rebellion, <laughs> rebel, you know, being able to do that. Yeah. I don't know, I thought that was interesting. I like how it's just kind of like, the agents probably could do something like this. They're not worried about it because they wouldn't, because they're not programmed to. Yeah, like I hope the next movie covers that a little more, because I think that's a very interesting thing to cover that's just sort of glossed over, yeah. and he does it. Like, I think it's plausible, Yeah. but that's it, one of the questions that Ghost in the Shell asks, is like, 
how is the mind and the body related? Yeah. And if this thing that has never had a body gets into a body, what happens to it? Sure, and sure. Is it able to cope with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like your body could just be a body for something else if your like data, if your information wasn't there anymore, right? Yeah. And that's sure. kind of what happens here is like he kills off the the memories and the information that makes that guy him. And now there's Smith taking over the body and controlling it. Like, it's interesting. Like, is Smith, like, is his ones and zeros inside that guy's brain? Or did he rewrite that guy's brain to be more like Smith? Yeah, like that brain should have all these connections and patterns that it's formed. Yeah. And he has no connection with those connections. Mm -hmm. Is he aware of it at all or are they all gone? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. To what extent is everything changed? Uh, alternatively, as far as like external matrix thing, the ending, we have Neo doing new stuff too. Yeah, yeah. He took outside power from matrix. outside. Mm-hmm. He said something's different. Yeah. He could feel them. And then he like it felt like you know what he did with the bullets. He did with sure. Yeah. The squiddies. Yeah. The squiddies. What do they call them? Sentinels. Sentinels. I think they call them squiddies, didn't they? Like because yeah. he went into the That's source, fine. maybe he has some sort of wireless connection to it almost, and can therefore mm-hmm. manipulate. Sure. Because yeah. every other like the one has gone in, and they've obviously chosen to the other set. Right? Sure. Yeah. So what happens when you don't do that and you go the other way? Then what? Well, they said like the one has accumulated more and more source code the more that they've existed so maybe he's got enough source code that he can start controlling machines now. Like the well but like where's yeah. the interface come in mm-hmm. like that's the question like how is this man's brain doing something to those machines yeah it's like, different when you're connected into yeah. the system unless sure. there's like because maybe Smith, they have wi-fi repeaters built in or well smith <laughs> right now he's in the real world and in the matrix at the same time Maybe Neo could be that too, and the two could have some connection Maybe. constantly. Yeah, I-, I love that it's the exact same music cue of when Neo stopped the bullets the first time in the first movie. Yeah. When he stops the Sentinels, ba 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 ba. Yeah. I just I I think it's you know because it's obviously a different type of uh, score than we I usually enjoy, but. <laughs> Having techno beats that last for 20 minutes for that highway scene. Burn, book a burn, book a burn, book a burn, 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 burn. It's so, it's done so well because I feel like that would be easily like, especially with like the kind of like the same rhythm. It's like, come on, let's go. You know, let's, sure. let's move we'll on. But monotonous. it like carries you. It's like, I don't know, there's something about the music in that scene that like you just don't want it to end. It makes me think a lot of the uh, Hotline Miami soundtrack yeah. where it just puts you in this trance yeah. and drives you forward. Maybe. Definitely. Could definitely be. in a trance. <clears throat> like some of what they do too, like Halloween was like the same, like what, four notes or whatever it was. But what it would do is like it wouldn't give it to you the exact same way. It'd be yeah. the same thing, but then they change the octaves mm-hmm. and stuff too and change a little bit of the bass line behind it or whatever it was, you know? Where like it would start yeah. off with just like just the piano notes, but then it would still be piano, but then you get like bong behind it and sure. stuff. Mm-hmm. And it would be a different, slightly different like mm-hmm. octave. Like it, and the music mm-hmm. also, like especially in this one, it matches what the character your protagonist in the scene is feeling like neo in the first one he's fighting three upgraded agents but it's a dance to him it's so easy that's why it's kind of like an orchestrated you know but whenever it's morpheus fighting an agent it's very like (laughs) you know music it's really funny i really like the way they do it like because you made mention of like this is strange music you know for a matrix movie in that first fight uh in the hallway with or a hallway Kind of like a, I don't know, warehouse room versus a three agents. Hi, Acellus. But you never once feel like, like, Neo has no problem with these three guys. I feel like the music, that's a cool choice for her. Yeah. I don't know why I love Keanu Reeves when he's like, hi, fellas. Like, hi, he just fellas. does this, like, <laughs> yeah. head tilt, head tilt. Yeah. Like, as he, hi, fellas. I love the the first fights and he's like, <laughs> upgrades. And the guy's pissed off. <laughs> but yeah, that's the, uh, that's the dude from Barry. That, uh, yeah, the one the on top girl. of the, yeah. mm-hmm. the truck oh, yeah. there. Uh-huh. When he was on top of the truck, I'm like, ah, oh, I see. That looks like the guy from Barry there. Sure. No, no, when I watched Barry, I was like, I think that's that guy from The Matrix. <laughs> I think it's all the big things. We did have um, Tank and Dozer are both dead. Yeah. So we have Link Yeah. Uh, instead, which I, always, I like that actor. He's, he's Michael from Lost. 
So, but I like yeah. his doesn't really believe in this sort of thing. But Morpheus is so convincing, and Neo can do what he does. He has this like, if there's a chance, I gotta help. Sure. Yeah. Well, even he, though he doesn't really believe, it starts too. It feels like because of his brother-in-law is saying yeah. like, "Hey, you need to do this." Like, yeah. If uh, was it Dozer that died, and then Tank was the one who mm-hmm. was like still alive and saved him. Yeah. Dozer so, didn't make it out of the movie. If that happens, like I don't know if like. Tank talks to him later on, or if Dozer said about a promise before, I forget who he said that made the promise, but he talks to them and he's like, "Okay, sure, I'll yeah. I'll do this ship," and but then the sister doesn't doesn't like it, you know, doesn't want to lose more family and stuff to it. But I think I think you get that promise initially, then you see shit, yeah, and you're like, "Yeah, I trust you, yeah." There's some shit here. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but I've seen it. He's just you pumping know? up his arms. Woo! Yeah, he's <laughs> like, "Yeah, we did it." No, but I would be. I, I don't know. I could do that job because the last movie, I swear there's probably like eight people on the Nebuchadnezzar. And then this one here, there's four. Yeah. And I think it would be so just, I don't know. Like those those two guys, that other ship that blew up with uh, Commander Sor- Soren or whatever it was. Soren. Like, Soren from Mass Effect. There's two guys there and there's shit coming and they're like, oh shit, we got to do some stuff, right? But if something comes while Link's there, it's just him. I, he's like, yeah. I gotta leave this to go do that, or I gotta ignore that to stay on this. Like, there's no one else helping you. You're all alone with like basically three dead bodies sitting around you, you know? Sure. So I'm like, you need more people just to make sure shit doesn't go bad. Yeah. And shit went bad for Soren's crew. It did. Man. It did. Do you think it's implied that the machines gave those machines to Zion? Um... Like he said, like no one ever comes down unless something goes wrong. Sure, it's been a hundred years. Like, I did, mean, did the first people that Neo freed did they build these machines or were like did the architect build it? Yeah, I, I, I would I, say I, the I, machines I like think, probably set them up like a little nest. Yeah. Well, how did you know? Like how the ones Zion, like here you go and like wow, thank you one. Well, how does Zion, Zion get made? Them? They just find this abandoned facility and they're like, I guess this is home. Or yeah, like, do they have to so. build it? Or like, what makes it more real? Then, I think the know? machines, like. I think the one like brings them, and the machines set it up, and he just has to lie to them. I would say so. Yeah, because that's the. I mean, it's really a, a Attack on Titan situation. Yeah. See, so that's the case. Why they got to drill? Why are they drill? Why don't they just take the holes they already made from the last time? <laughs> well, they fill them back up. They, so, yeah, they fill them back up <laughs> yeah. to maintain the illusion With that what? they're safe down there. Metals, iron, iron, iron ore. Maybe the explosion, like when they kill Zion, it like. Reforms the rocks or whatever. Well, they just do a different spot. Sure, they've got a bunch of different spots. Yeah, I I do like. We didn't get to see them too much in in this here, but the the look of the little like yeah, those like little mech suit things. Yeah, I, just, I just like the looks of those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I liked. I didn't realize that the one was like doing western like kind of thing. Throwing his guns. Yeah, yeah I thought that was good. fun. I like the one. Uh, what are the bad ships called? The Sentinels. The Sentinels, the Sentinels that was like a drill. Oh, oh, the big one? Like, yeah, the yeah, big one. The hammer? That was really cool. Or no. no. It wasn't called the hammer. No, that was the, the other hammer. ship. Apparently the, the hammer is uh, called the Molnir. But no one can say it or wants to say it, so they just call it the hammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Its name is Molnir. <laughs> this is before the Thor movie came out. Yeah. No one had any idea. I think yeah. that's funny. No, I like how it throws the thing. Like it's it's like <laughs> like it spins yeah. around real quick. Yeah. They've learned. They've upgraded. Like, I wonder if the Sentinels... I mean, I imagine they always had that tech. They just don't use it until they're actually trying to destroy Zion. Probably. Maybe. Because they probably know. They got EMPs. We throw this shit, we'll get them. But yeah. the first movie, they didn't have it. Sure. So I don't know if it was an upgrade from then, or if they're just like, they're not, we're not letting you use it until you really are trying to kill them. Yeah. Like... To give you hope. Have... did Like, the first five times, did they have... Did they fight back as well? And they never had to progress their sentinel abilities. Like, they have, like, yeah. I or do they mean. always have to progress it, but they have to start low and then work their way up until the destruction of Zion? Yeah. Because otherwise, you're going to kill them too soon. Yeah, they almost killed them without trying that hard in the last movie. So does each cycle take a hundred years? Is that the idea? No. It could. I mean, I don't know. I thought it was a hundred years since they started the cycle, and this is the sixth cycle. Yeah. Right. So every cycle is a hundred years. Right, if it's a hundred years since they started the cycle, and this is the sixth cycle, because if they have to repopulate years. the thing, like it's that, that takes a while. If they're starting with thirteen people, I, I imagine that's the case when uh, when uh, Morpheus talks about what he believes the time frame is in the first movie. It's like a hundred years from now. 
but he doesn't know that that's happened six times. So yeah. it's probably actually six hundred years from now. Because hmm. I imagine what it is. I think that's the what I was architect thought. rests on the seventh time. Probably. <laughs> I do like that was. Man, I wish it was Sean Connery. It was going to be Sean Connery. What the fuck? Uh, (laughs) That was one of those roles he just like, I don't know what this is. You can understand, though, being given this script, and here's the part you're playing. It's like, all right, can he do this? And I don't know what the fuck this is. (laughs) What is the confusing... Like, he just says a lot of big words, you know? And it's like... There's like photoshops or video edits of like him like, you know, he's sitting on a thesaurus. (laughs) It's a lot of techno babble. Yeah. So, but yeah. A guy says ergo four times. Like who says I need to say ergo more? Did you have an ergo counter over there? No, I just remembered. Oh, you're like ergo one, <laughs> ergo again, damn two. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I like like that, and then the uh, Seraph that was going to be Jet Li. Like mm-hmm. that's who they, they apparently they had made the role for Jet Li, but then Jet Li wanted to pay just as much to Counter Reeves, and the part's not that big. <laughs> no. Well, it's a it's a smaller part. Was it bigger in the like when it was Jet Li? Maybe. I mean, maybe it was. I don't know, but. You know, if he would have stayed around, it'd have been sweet seeing Keanu Reeves and Jet Li fighting all yeah. the Smiths. Oh yeah, <laughs> both the ones. <laughs> yeah, so that would have been cool, but because they might have recasted and shrunk the part. Mm-hmm. It's possible, maybe. maybe. It's also worth mentioning too that this movie and the third movie were like budgeted and shot together, together, and then released like a year apart. I do know, that, like what Lord of the Rings was. I did know that when they did the second movie, they went right into mm-hmm. the third, kind of like Back to the Future. Yeah, like Back mm-hmm. to the Future did that. Yeah. So it's very much like when Lord of the Rings was three movies, but they shot all at once, so you could do it year to year to year, you know? Not like, like I can't wait to watch the next Dune, but it's probably going to take four years for me yeah. to watch it, you know? Yeah. Sure. I get you there. <sighs> all I right. I didn't realize this is not necessarily on topic with Matrix, but I just, we just watched Tremors like this past weekend. Yeah. I didn't realize it's because we were talking about Back to the Future, and then I thought of Michael J. Fox, and then I thought of Family Ties. But the dad of Family Ties is Burt Gummer. Yeah. I didn't realize that until like, oh, I was reading Michael the Gross. I was like, Michael Gross. I'm like, isn't that the dad? And I was looking at him like, holy shit. Is he the dad from Family Ties? It sure is. And I looked at him Imagine like, with an elephant. Whoa. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I never connected those two before. I'm like, holy shit. Mm. Sorry. Unrelated to this, but. Also unrelated to this is you know that Spielberg did uh, E.T. chronologically. Like so, filming wise, filmed, filmed it chronologically. Oh, so to help the child actors, like actually have a connection at the end scene, and everything, mm-hmm. makes sense. Well, related to that, that's not related to this. E.T. in that movie sees another child during Halloween dressed like Yoda, and he goes, "Oh!" In episode one, we see E.T.'s at the Senate. So does that mean? That E.T. either just like sees it, like, oh, interesting, or is like, hey, buddy, it's me! <laughs> hey! <laughs> I remember. Right. That means E.T. is crazy old, if that's true. True. Um, a buddy. long, long way away. <laughs> so, but overall, like, this is better at least than Democrat 2. Democrat 2. It, it sure was. Yeah, how would, how would you rank the movie? Because I, I agree. There's a lot of things in here I'm like, you don't need this, you don't need this. Sure. sure. This is said so many times. I agree with those things, but. It's when also I, 2003. When audience. I said like <laughs> earlier today, because Rick was, you know, when he got here, he was like, ah, I kind of don't want to watch it because I've been putting it off for so long. I'm like, yes, but sure. you're going to see two of my favorite action scenes of all time. Sure. And they're kind of just the same action scene. <laughs> the, the first movie is, is I think, better as a whole with everything it Agreed. gives you and what yeah, it does yeah. and whatnot. Even though I think it's kind of slow in the beginning a little yeah. bit too because you're in the real world. Sure. And like he's just a normal yeah. guy until you get out and you start learning all this other stuff. Oh shit! And then they're learning to fight. But it's also made stuff, to be you know? one movie where this is made to be two more. Movies. Yeah, sure. So we have yeah, to it's gonna be it. hard to judge this one without seeing the next one. Yeah, sure. I think I get that. It's like watching Empire Strikes Back and be like, oh, was this good? Like it was pretty good. But where's it going? Yeah. What's yeah. the next step? But it's much better than I expected it to be. Good. Good. That's good. I'm glad to to. I'm glad Rick you. had his bar here. That way, even if it was here, he's like, yeah, it was better than I thought it was going to be, yeah. you know? Yeah. I was expecting a Battlefield Earth. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. no. no, I no. I and there's a been... lot of similarities, don't get me wrong. I've never seen Battlefield Earth. I wouldn't have been excited to watch Battlefield Earth. Not I would have Well, Rick, then you would have liked it I more. Would've. I would have loved it more. If it was Battlefield Earth. <laughs> so Rick's bar was here. Morpheus stood on top of that, put a sword there, so on top of that bar. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Meanwhile, Keanu Reeves was going like this. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for watching this reaction uh, and review to The Matrix 
reload it. But there's another matrix before another matrix comes out. So are you interested? You wanted to check out the third uh, so Rick can complete the journey yes. before a new journey starts? If you do, push that thumbs up button. If you don't, choose the choice of the thumbs down button. But you've already made your choice. Now you're you just watching understand. this video to understand why you why? already made that choice.